All right, thanks so much. So I'm just sitting here with my girl because we're celebrating and continuing to celebrate Armenian History Heritage Month. Um, and, and what I love is today you're showing us a little bit of our local history mm -hmm. that may not be from the area you thought it was, right? Yes. Like, that's the thing that I love. You've told me before, Armenians are everywhere. Yes. But talk about the significance of Montebello. And, and Southern California, right? The yeah. history of Southern California. So before Glendale, before Hollywood, the original communities Armenians settled in were from Fresno, Boyle Heights, and Montebello. Not long after Montebello was established in 1920, it became the first suburb most Armenians settled in back in the 30s. Here is a piece of Southern California history. Those who came to Montebello were those who during World War II escaped the Soviet Union, escaped many of them from Ukraine, from the very cities that are being bombed today. Salpi Lazarian is the director of the Institute of Armenian Studies at USC, committed to documenting and preserving stories, stories which are an essential part of the Armenian experience. 20 million Soviet citizens died in World War II. 200,000 of those were Armenians. Some were captured by the Germans. Historic Armenian communities in Eastern Europe and Crimea were relocated as slave labor. Others retreated with the German army, seeking an escape from Stalin's regime. This is how some 4,000 Armenians found themselves in Stuttgart at the Funker Kazerna camp when the war ended. Jack Hagenian's grandparents were part of that group. My grandfather, he was a genocide survivor who eventually was taken to Germany by Nazis as a forced laborer. My mom is one of 185 Armenians that were born in those labor camps. There they bonded, and they bonded during a really difficult time. Those bonds have continued through today, through the various generations. By 1952, most of the 4,000 Armenians were allowed to land in the United States of America as a result of a special act of Congress called the Displaced Persons Act of 1948. A nonprofit was formed by the, um, the leadership of George Mardikian, who was from San Francisco, and money was raised to bring these people to America. And my family is so fortunate to be beneficiaries of that act. Some settled in Detroit, Michigan, or Niagara Falls, New York, remembered the families they had left behind, and began new lives as factory workers. Jack's family went through Ellis Island to Massachusetts to Michigan. Because there was a lot of jobs there. It was Motor City. Eventually, many like his family headed west. They succeeded in business and as innovators. They flourished. As they moved, they looked for businesses, obviously opportunities to make a living that did not require language skills, education. Many of them started in the trash business and actually hauling trash and then it was Armenians who transformed the trash business from just residential trash pickup to commercial trash pickup, which is such a huge industry in Southern California. Other Armenians went into the food business, started with lunch trucks, which then later became hot lunch trucks. They established churches, schools, dance groups, community centers, and gave back to the community. Montebello is home to the first Armenian Genocide Monument on public property in the world. The Holy Cross Armenian Apostolic Cathedral is another place that brings thousands through its doors. This church has great significance in Jack's life. I was baptized here in this church and I was married in this church. My family were contributors uh, to the building of this church. Right next door is Bagramian Hall, an enormous banquet hall where large-scale events take place, including the swearing-in ceremony when Jack became the first Armenian-American mayor of the city. And next door is the smaller Tamanjan Hall. It's a really wonderful place. There's a lot of different people here. And everybody seems to really uh, understand and respect each other's cultures. My grandfather was able to experience the American dream of owning a home in America. So in 1957, he purchased his home uh, here in Montebello for $14,000. One Armenian-owned business that perfectly illustrates the diversity of the community is a local favorite, Aziz Diner. This is the big boss here. Number two. It's, uh, it's a very colorful place, um, not just physically, but when you look at the menu, because they serve Mexican food and Armenian food and, you know, American cuisine. Really, the common denominator among all Armenians that live in Montebello is that they feel very connected to this community because there are people, there are families here like mine that have been here three generations and now four generations. 
And those three or four generations, you were saying to me that a lot of those bonds, as, as you made the point in the piece, is that those bonds were formed in those labor camps. Those mm -hmm. families that bonded then, the generations that came after them stayed bonded. It's really amazing because the friendships that were formed in those camps to this day, their children, 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 those friendships will continue. And I witnessed that and they're closer than families yeah. um, because of the hardships they underwent. The shared experience, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the beauty of what he is saying and what Salpi said is that um, Montebello feels like a community and we've lost that sense of community in many parts of the country, yeah. that real feeling of yeah. a place you belong and their roots there established. You don't want to leave, you want right. to stay, right? right. So right. it's really nice. And again, thank you to USC, the, uh, the Institute of Armenian Studies. The footage out of USC Amazing, is right? I couldn't have done the story. It, the story got so much better with that. So. Well, kudos to you, kudos to the editor, to the team, and, and thanks for USC participation. Thanks for letting us celebrate this with you. We're yes. all learning it's been so a, much. It's been a long, busy month, but there you go. <laughs> <Long> <laughs>